and I'm going to, um, John, was that it? Sorry. it that, that was it uh, from my side. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, and there's nothing else in the chat, so we're good cool. to go. And I'm going to hand it over to Danny. Um, Danny has been um, a speaker with us before. He uh, came and did the headshot setup back in February for us. And he is still president of the Maryland PPA. Really? He didn't. I still am. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he is amazing with portraiture. And um, he is going to show us a few of his uh, tricks when he edits and um, go over uh, Photoshop for us and show us some of the tools. So um, I think everyone here has probably seen Photoshop. Doesn't mean they use it all the time. So um, you know, just, you know, if anybody has any questions, feel free. Is it okay if they unmute and just ask live? Or ask live, ask as we go, because sometimes I won't, I can't, I guess when I'm speaking, I don't necessarily pay attention to the chat box. So if they can and do I'll, it live, we'll, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll watch the chat box as well. Yeah. So if anybody wants to put it in the chat box, don't feel free. Don't be shy. I got it, uh, and then I'll let you know. Awesome. Thank you. All righty. So, and I think you can probably, the share screen should, thing, thing should work. Yeah, so. I will, we, we checked that earlier, so we'll do that. Okie doke. So Are you ready? Danny, yep. All right, thank you guys for having me. So before I begin, let me just say that I am using the Photoshop Creative Cloud version. If you're not using Creative Cloud, then you're on your own. If you have Photoshop 6, I can't help you. <laughs> Very similar, people, just not the same. <laughs> yeah, they're similar. The, the tools we're going to talk about are, are, haven't changed in Photoshop, so they're going to still be there. But I want to kind of walk you through a couple of images that I'm, I'm going to show you tonight, walk you through some of the tools that I use. And along the way, please feel free to ask questions because I know that Photoshop can be overwhelming to some people. And if you want me to stop and explain something more in detail, I'll do the best I can. I'm gonna show you some tricks. I'm gonna show you some different um, things that I use for portraiture and things that may save you guys some time. Um, if, you're, if you don't know Photoshop at all, sit back and enjoy the show. Um, I did leave my name and number in the chat if you guys wanna get a hold of me after this session. I, uh, Christy and Sam know that I will be happy to answer your questions afterwards as well. So with that, let me share my screen. Um, last week, and I had the wonderful uh, duty to photograph some 1950s pinup in a cigar bar. And this is one of my shots that I did. Can you guys see that screen? Am I sharing the screen? Yes. Yeah, we got it. We got it. All, right. Um, all right. So first off, let me just kind of go over some tools. Uh, this might... Okay. So when I'm in Photoshop, I am a photographer. And there's something I want to show you guys that may just set you up for success to begin with. Under Windows up here, you have this little thing called Workspace. Adobe has created several different workspaces for web designers, for painters, for 3D modeling artists, and for photographers. Um, I would suggest that you click on this photography one, and your tools will be the same tools that I am going to show you tonight. If you change it to any other thing, the tools will change on you. They're still there, they're just in a different order. For example, if you go to painting, the brushes are spread out a little bit differently. But as for, for photographers, you know, the, the brush tool set is the same. It'll always be the same, it's defaulted. I won't go into too much detail about it, but once you start getting advanced in Photoshop, the Photoshop tools that you see on the left-hand side of my screen, you can start creating your own little tool, uh, tool well is what I call this. And you can take brushes out, you can add brushes to it, you can, I mean, you can modify it to be your own. And that's why you see this Danny's default workspace up here, because I've done that. I've taken some tools out that I don't really use. Like I, I don't really use the gradient tool that much. I don't use the smear tool. So there are tools I just don't use. So instead of them being there, I just kind of got rid of them. But for this tonight's class, I want you to be on the photography tab here. So click on that. And over here, we're going to start working down. I just kind of want to go through these tools real quick and show you a little example about how to use them. And then we'll start working on this image a little bit. So the first tool is a move tool. This is exactly what it says. You need to 
move things around. I'm going to close this window. I can't see my. There we go. Um, if you wanted to move things around. So the move tool will allow you to move. And that's going to be a really slow watch. There it is. See? The move tool, pretty simple. You just grab what you want and you want to move it. That's exactly what that tool is for. You can move layers, you can move objects, you can move things into the screen. Over here, one of the things that Adobe allows you to do is have a, a library. These are my logos. So the move tool, if you click that, you can drag and drop your logo into your screen. And from there, you can move it around to wherever you want it to be. That's what the move tool is for. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward there. Let me get rid of those guys. Selection tool. Pretty simple. If I want to select that little whiskey bottle, that's what it does. It's a selection tool. Now from there, we have several different options to do. Some of you guys that are familiar with Photoshop, as you know, there are a thousand and one ways to do something in Photoshop. I have my ways. If you have a different way, that's cool. There's always another way to skin a cat. That didn't sound, that's not very politically correct, sorry. But this will allow you to do things like jump, select the, the whiskey glass. Um, if I do a command J, that whiskey glass now becomes part of the screen on a different layer. So you can select things with it. You can then move your, use, use your move tool and move things around. But your selection tool is just basically to grab a certain selection of the image that you want for whatever reason. These are, uh, this tool, next tool is a polygon. Hey, hey, Danny? Yes. Uh, going back to the library, you mentioned over there on the right, you got the My Library with with your logos in it. Correct. So the question on the chat is, is the library linked to CC Storage or can yes. you use it from your desktop? It's, it's linked to your cloud. You see here on the bottom, there's a cloud right there. Mm -hmm. This this library- If you don't want to use the cloud, what happens? Sorry, Fred? If you don't want to use the cloud, what happens? You don't have to use the cloud. I'm pretty sure you can have that there as a library. I, for some reason, I just use the cloud to, to store it. It's only two little small logos. But what I have seen other people do is <clears throat> we will add textures to this. So a commonly used texture I might put in my library, a commonly used, I don't know, if I use like solar flares or sparkler effects, I can add them here. It's just a quick way for you to, to grab them instead of searching for them all the time. And I only use, so for Creative Suite, you have, I think Adobe gives you like one ter one gigabyte of, of space. That's a lot of space. So you can add a bunch of different things to that. So you can add content like here, I can add content to it. You can add elements, you can add, I mean, I, I like my logo being there because it's, it's easy to access, but it uh, it is just something that you use to for your most commonly used elements, whether it's, you know, your logo as an asset, whether it's backgrounds, Dibby doodles, doodles, whatever you want to put there. That's what that's for. Um, but can you use a cloud-based or not cloud-based? That's a great question and I don't have the answer to that. I think I would imagine Adobe would allow you to do that, but I yeah, have I, not tried I that. think it does default to the cloud because um, I actually tried to link mine to a certain folder and it was giving me some trouble. So I just didn't have the patience to figure yeah. it out yet. <laughs> so while we're speaking of the cloud, one of the things that I do like about Creative Cloud, the new version of Creative Cloud, if I'm working on my Macintosh, which I'm on right now, if I can save this image very easily to the cloud, if I do a save as, it's gonna ask me, where do I wanna save this document to? I can save it to my cloud documents, or I could save it onto my computer. If I know I'm going to be working remotely, I'm going to save it to the cloud because that way I can work. I can take my laptop with Photoshop on it, open it up and work on it in a different location without being at the same source. So that's kind of nice to work, to work that stuff around, especially when you're on a deadline and you're, I don't know if you're taking the weekend off or something and you want to go ocean city and, you can save documents to the cloud. That way you can access them from a different computer that has Photoshop, the Photoshop CC, I should say. So that's kind of neat. So I'm learning more about the cloud. That's what I love about Photoshop is there's just more and more ways for me to spend time editing. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so this third tool down is a polygon lasso tool. If you see this little triangle right here, 
it pops open and shows you other tools below it. You'll notice this letter L. If you tap L on your keyboard, it'll bring up the lasso tool. If you tap it again, it'll bring up the polygon tool. It just rotates through these tools if you keep tapping the L button or the L key. But your lasso tool allows you just to quickly do a selection. It's another type of selection tool. The polygon tool allows you to do more straight line kind of selections. Again, these are just selection tools. The other one is a magnetic tool, which is really slick. If you wanted to kind of come around here, it kind of draws around it yourself. It kind of, see how it kind of clicks to the outside of the object? This one's probably bad because the contrast has not been good, but it just, it does its little, it's just another way to do a selection. That's all this is for. Danny? Yep. <clears throat> uh, control D is how Danny's getting out of those devices when he's switching between those tools. So if I, yeah, let me, so if I have something that's highlighted like that, on the Macintosh, it's Command D and it gets rid of it. Um, if you do something like this and you do Command H, it hides the dancing tools. So if I came in here, I could still still use it. So there, even though it's hidden, it's still there. So Command H hides it. Command D gets rid of it. If that makes any sense. Which I think it does. Um, this is our wonderful magic wand tool. It selects colors and similar colors of an area. So if I want just to select the, um, why, oh, what's not showing up? There it is. There's my magic wand. So what it does is it samples your colors, not to get too technical and not to get too mathematical. You can sample sizes up here. I typically stick to three by three, but you can change it to a single point. You can change it to five by five. And so what it does is it takes those three pixels, five pixels, 11 pixels, 31 pixels that you select, it averages it, it averages it in the software and it selects those, what it thinks is the closest colors to that. So it's kind of neat. I kind of keep it close to that. So it'll just select all the whites. Holding down your shift key, you can add to it and get as much white as you want. Holding down your option key. Uh, these are all Macintosh controls. I apologize. I don't know the exact, um, PC controls, unless I'm in front of the PC, I could tell you. I, I, it's, it's the, I don't know. I, I could, does, do PCs have option keys? I don't think so. Yes. Yeah. Alt key. Control and alt. The alt key, okay. Yeah. So it, you can negatively remove stuff as well. So these tools can be very powerful if you are looking to, like if I wanted to change the color of this white top to maybe be a light gray to maybe match, because right now it's really kind of exploding off the page a little bit. So that's the magic, the great magic wand tool. And then there's the quick select tool. If you look under your tools, there's usually stuff tucked underneath of them. So the quick select is the same thing. It just kind of, it just kind of goes and does this little thing. It'll grab the closest colors it thinks is it. Quick. Mm -hmm. This this photograph is not a good uh, image to do that with, but it you kind of get the gist, I think. Down here is our old crop tool, pretty self-explanatory. Um, the perspective crop tool, I never use it. So, but you can adjust certain things. And if you took a, a architectural photograph, you could take that perspective crop and straighten up the edges of the buildings if you wanted to do that. This eyedropper tool, it just allows you to pick and choose colors. Like I, I want to shoot that. Um, it'll show you. I keep pointing at the screen like you guys can see my finger, but it does the circle so you can see what you're targeting and the inner inner circle color is what you've selected. The outer circle color is just kind of a grayscale thing and it'll show you. So now there's the, if you look at the bottom of the circle, that's the before color that you selected. And the top color is a new color you've selected. Okay. So eyedropper should do like that. And then the color sampler tool, um, similar thing, you can just pick up a color and it'll tell you like up here in the information, which RGB color you have, which is kind of handy if you are trying to match colors and doing a color cast and 
doing more advanced color stuff. But I honestly, I very rarely use that because I typically come down here and I'll double click it and I'll get my colors from here. Like my RGBs are here and here versus that color picker. Same thing, just different way to do it. This little guy here, my spot healing brush tool is probably my favorite tool in all of Photoshop because it gets rid of all kinds of blemishes and mistakes and it just does a great job. It does some, I guess it does some sampling and some AI and it just is perfect for pimples and zits and tiny wrinkles and wrinkles and clothes. I mean, it's the best. I love that tool. That's my favorite tool in Photoshop. This again is the um, spot healing brush. And then below it <clears throat> is the healing brush tool. There's The difference is that you have to let me kind of zoom in on our face here. Okay, so let's take this little guy right there. If I came in with my spot healing brush, I just kind of go over it and it knows what to do. If I go the other route and take this one, it's going to ask me, what do you want it, what are you trying to do? So I need to target where I want it to think from and then do it. So there's a two-step process. So I kind of avoid the bottom one because it's really, you know, I, I don't want to think. I, I like the one on top better because it just knows what I want. The one below, I have to tell it what I want to do. The next one is the patch tool. I kind of like the patch tool as well. When you have a patch tool like this, you can select an object. And if you drag it, it does the same kind of calculations and it helps you get rid of things. Um, my model here doesn't have any wrinkles under the eyes, but if she did, I would take this patch tool. I could kind of come around her eyeball like this and I'll just come down a little bit and get rid of any kind of wrinkles that she might have. That's kind of a bad selection, so I'll get rid of that. So what I'm doing there to get rid of that is just doing um, Command Z, goes backwards, takes you back a step or two or three, depending on how much you've set up in Photoshop. Um, this content aware move tool, I have never used this, so I have no idea what it does. Christy, do you know? Yeah, if you wanted to extend the bar out, you could like grab a section and move a whole section away. Mm. Yeah, Great. I've never done that. Uh, it's really nice when you have plain backgrounds. If you're shooting mm. high key or low key, you okay, can do cool. that really easily. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll have to try that. The brush tool simulates a paintbrush. If you've ever painted in real life, if you've done paint by numbers, if you have taken an art class, if you have done wine and design, this paintbrush is for you. It's, uh, it's the beginning of, one of, another one of my favorite tools is this and the mixer brush bar below it. This whole section of paintbrush tools is something you guys, if you're working in Photoshop, come in really handy. To begin with, the very first brush tool, it's just exactly what it says. It is a paintbrush. If you dipped paint in, if you dipped your brush into a paint bucket, let me reduce my paint size here. <clears throat> so I'm selecting the, the red in her lips to give me the color that I want just to show you guys what I'm doing here. Um, the paintbrush, it is going to paint on top of her, just like a paintbrush would. Um, there's ways to control it. You have up at the top here, you can control the size of your brush, the type of your brush, the style of your brush. And this is probably a class, if you guys want me to come back, this would be a wonderful like add-on to this class because I think brushes are, are the most underutilized tool in Photoshop, but the most powerful tool. They can, again, remove wrinkles, paint colors, change colors two different kinds of things. It's really a neat place to start. But that beginner brush, um, let me undo this, sorry. That beginner brush is what, what that is for. It's just a normal paint brush. I'm just gonna do this on the layer so I don't mess up my, my background. <clears throat> so at the very top, at the basic brush, you have the opacity, which basically says I'm gonna make this as red as I can and the flow is gonna be, if you're thinking of maybe like a um, airbrush, if that's how much air is pushing through, it's like 100%, you're just loading that brush up and you're painting away. 
The second one down is a pencil tool. Very similar, it is a pencil. I never use a pencil. Uh, if I do, it's very rarely, it's probably to touch up a spot or two. I very rarely use that pencil tool. The mixer brush tool will rock and change your world. We can do a whole day on just the mixer brush. I use this brush to paint. I use this brush to, um, I, I can simulate oil painting. I can simulate watercolors. I can do a whole bunch of stuff with this mixer brush. I can simulate a ton of things. Let me see if I can do something here. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna try this, but Sam and I have done this before where the mixer brush and my computer is so old that it kind of slows it down a little bit. But if you look right here where these wrinkles are in her shirt, if I took the mixer brush and I target, I'm holding down my option key, I'm targeting the, the white in the shirt here. I can come with my mixer brush. Let me show you the right one. This is a starburst. I don't want a starburst, sorry. Let me, ba, 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 ba. Give me one second, let me find what I want. Again, the other thing about brushes is you will get lost. So there's a way to, again, another future class is to show you how to kind of organize your brushes, which I'm not very good at right now. But there's a way to organize everything so you have your favorites. Like where, my favorites should be down here. Where are they? Here they are. Beauty spade. There they are. There they go. So I got this blender bristle brush. If I kind of come in here, I'm using my bracket, not my bracket key. My, what do you call them? The French keys, I guess. Uh, left bracket, right bracket to make it bigger and smaller. I can come in here and just, whoops. Sorry, that's really mixing. Watch your color palette. Yeah. yeah it's up at the top, yeah. Yep. So I want to clean my brush off here. Can you zoom in to where you're actually working? It's really hard to tell. So, yep. So if I kind of come in here, I can kind of make Thank this you. mixer brush do some things in here. So you can really get rid of a lot, and this is just really quick, but you can get rid of a lot of sins of the fabric if you if you wanna start working it and doing some things. But you can see here, as I bring my brush this way, it's bringing some white into that shadow area. Mm -hmm. and if I come back this way with it, it's gonna bring the black back with it. Just like a wet brush. Just like a wet brush, mm -hmm. yep. And if you, there's other things up here, I don't wanna to get too complicated, but if you click on what I just did where it turns red, it'll use this color to mix with what's underneath there and kind of bring everything together. It's, it's really powerful. And once you start to understand it and get to know it, you will just fall in love with the mixer brush. It's, it, it is a, again, one of my favorite tools. It is so cool. And I've, um, I can show you guys some things I've painted that when we're done, I'll show you if I have time. That's the mixture brush. And then the other one is the color replacement tool. Super cool. So the color replacement tool, it's kind of exactly what it says. If you want to change the color of something, let me see if I can do this. You can see how I'm painting the blue in there. It's kind of covering up the white. That's what the uh, color replacement tool does. So if you wanted to make a quick, a quick change to the color of a shirt, you can do it. And you just come back and erase that. Sorry, my cat just attacked my foot. <laughs> so the color replacement tool doesn't work so well. Well, there you go. Black, it works really good. It depends on the cloth, I guess. So you can really do some cool stuff. The color replacement tool I've seen some really cool, I've seen some really great stuff from uh, members in Kelly's group. Like Dave Kelly uses it all the time. He'll change the color of some woman's dress to match the background. It's really cool. Yeah. That's a oh, fun response to the tone. Say that one more time. It responds to the tone. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And so sometimes like if, if I were to use red on black, I have, I've noticed that red on black doesn't really work so well. It depends on the colors. You have to play with it, but. It yeah, but how would you? Fun stuff. Yeah, how would you correct for the white now, right? Like, I see what you've done with the suspender and the tie, but the white's affected as well. 
Yeah, I, I would have that very lightly. So I would just delete that layer. No, I, I get that. But I mean, say you really wanted the tie to be a blue. Like, how would you, would you add a mask to that layer and then just remove it from the white? Is that where you go with that? You could, you could do it that way. Um, if I were just, if I looked at this originally, I probably would have not have done the shirt. I thought the color was going to come out better on the shirt, to be honest with you, but it really came out better on the blacks. The oh, so you did it for the shirt. Like that was your point. You were trying to change the color. I was trying to change the color of the shirt, which got you. not the way I wanted it to work out. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. In an ideal could. world, he would put a mask on it and do non-destructive editing mm -hmm. rather than erasing. I think that's the point you're trying to make. Yep. Well, okay, so. yeah, for me, like, yeah, you could do it either way, right? But erasing is it, it, so much harder because you can't correct it. But yeah, mask would then take it from the white or take it from the tie, depending on where you were headed. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. I mean, if I wanted to add, I think I could do that here. I have the layer below it. Whoops. Yeah, I guess I could do it that way. So I can, I mean, there's the mask. So if I brought my white brush over, not my color brush, but my regular brush, I could just kind of paint in, oops, paint in what is below there. So a mask is a great way to do it as well. So yeah, you can do all kinds of cool stuff that way. So those brushes are really powerful when you get a chance to use them, but the mixer brush, man, you will, you could fall in love with that brush. That is such a cool brush. Next down on our little list of tricks and techniques is going to be the stamp clone tool. The clone tool, the pattern stamp tool I never use. The clone stamp tool is again something that you can use to alleviate blemishes and, and things with it. I've seen people do skin tones with it, uh, soften skin with it. I have no idea how Kelly does it, but he does it. You know, you can do all kinds of neat stuff. But the, the tool just gets rid of blemishes as you go. You have to sample the area next to it and it will pick up and do fun stuff. Oops, that was not good. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so, but that's what the clone tool does. The that's one below it. For. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, uh, yes. Real quick. So there's a question on the chat going back to the mixer brush. So. Yeah. There's a, a person online, Cheryl, who's saying that she does not see the mixer brush option, even though she's using Adobe CC. So is there something that she needs to do to add it? Mm. Mm. Ask her to go up to the windows here. Make sure that her workspace is selected for photography. And then see if it pops up there. If it doesn't, then I'd have to look at what her what her sidebar looks like. And, there. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it set to photography, but my brush is only showing brush tool. And I didn't hear that. You've got it set to photography. So when you hold your brush down, you don't get the four options. No, sir. Interesting. Could it be that she has to import the mixer brush? Like no, these, on the brushes brush are, these brushes are Adobe standard. They're kind of, they are default. And actually, mine wasn't on there either at one point. So, Carolyn, I'll look at mine and see what, how huh. I added it. Thanks. We'll figure it out for you. That's wild. Because these are defaults. Hmm. You could try the help bar, too, and put in mixer brush and see if it takes you somewhere for it. You could. Yep. The uh, stamp tool, clone stamp tool, I just showed you how to use it. I have no idea how the pattern, tool, pattern stamp tool works. I've never used it. I'm assuming you can stamp a pattern with it. This is your history brush. This is something that you can use um, if you go to the screen over here. <clears throat> this is your history palette. Your history brush. <sighs> This is a little bit above my pay grade, but the history brush allows you to sort of paint on a different layer. It, it's confusing to me. So I'm going to ignore that one for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize, but it's just, it's something that you, you can restore. You, you can, you can go back to a certain part of your image and just restore that. Like we talked about the blue and white shirt. I could go back to a certain point and kind of use that tool to erase or get rid of the, the light, light blue and the white shirt. 
but I just don't know how to show you that sample. The eraser tool, pretty simple. It erases stuff that you don't want. And that's interesting. Makes it, and that makes the background transparent and so. Your gradient tool you can use to blend colors. So if you wanna go from a light blue to a dark blue or light pink, and you can do radial blurs or gradient blurs from the center, from the, from the side. It's kind of neat. Can, hey, gun. Danny, yep. can I just add something to that? So this is Denise. I know I'm talking to Samantha, so don't freak out. But like, so I would say to people who are like watching all this, the gradient tool is the most epic way to blend a mask as well. So like, don't mm -hmm. think you have to use it directly on the photo. If you have a mask and you say have brightened, you, you've chosen a, a mask for brightening, you can only brighten the foreground by using a gradient tool and having a nice soft blend. So, so that tool is actually used yep. in multiple different ways. That's, I just wanted to point that out. Oh yeah, it is used and, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, but masks are a very powerful thing in Photoshop and, and that's, uh, God, that's again, that's a next level class. We, Paul Peterman and I were talking about this today about setting up like study groups for this stuff because it's, it's really a lot to go through. And it's hard to do in a two hour session and it just, it's kind of overwhelming. But anyway, here we are. The blur tool will do, just does exactly what it does. It blurs an area that you want in your image. Um, the sharpen tool will sharpen an edge for you or sharpen things for you. Uh, like if I went in here to our eyeballs, you well, you'll fortunately not be able, you're not gonna be able to see it on this computer, but it, it's sharpening her eyes. And you see her eyes getting lighter in there. Mm -hmm. So it, it sharpens the eyes. Like, like right there, you really see it. But that's what the sharpen tool does. Your great burn tool and your dodge tools, your dodge tool, your burn tool, your sponge tool. These are great when you're doing frequency separations or if you are, well, dodge is going to light something. So if I wanted to lighten under her, her eyes here, Oops, let me, get, let me get on the right layer here, sorry. So if I get under here, the, <clears throat> the dodge tool, you can do midtones, you can do shadows, you can do highlights. I keep it in the midtone section. I like to just kind of, you can lighten things up. See how it's lighting up the, the top of the eyelid there? You can brush that in as much as you want. That's what the dodge tool is for. Um, the burn tool is the opposite. You can add darkness underneath of something if you wanted to. That is what the dodge tool does. You can add different shadows for different sides and different things. And this is an art form all in itself too. Dodging and burning is a really cool thing. And then the sponge tool, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like mixes things together. That's a really bad example. <laughs> it will mix, the sponge tool like, I don't know, it kind of mixes things. You can mix well, it's like things. It's like a makeup artist sponge. It does mix yeah. it. Yeah. It just kind of pushes water around the thing. <laughs> Next tool, which I don't really use. I don't use Photoshop to do any page layout or any kind of, I don't know. I, I would use it to do maybe a Facebook cover and maybe add my name to it, but I, I don't use the, the text tool very much. The, <clears throat> the pen tool, great little option or a great little thing to do. If you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator or uh, any of that stuff, you can use this Benzier curve technique and kind of just grab all kinds of things to make selections with it. Another great way to make selections, a great way to make precise selections is with this pen tool. And then you get the free form, the curvature pen, anchor point. So just all kinds of things underneath there. The free form pen is exactly what it says. It's kind of like you're using your, your own little, you're just free forming. <laughs> it's like you're writing with your own pencil. You could be a tattoo artist. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so the pen tool is pretty powerful. But the, the, the first pen tool I showed you, I use that a lot to separate things from backgrounds or to cut things out of backgrounds. The path selection tool, um, it has to do with this pen tool. If I, I'm pretty sure this is a path. 
So if I create that, I can come under here, make it a working path. And if I'm not mistaken, this tool underneath here will help me guide this sample around or helps me select the path in some way or shape or form and allows me to manipulate it a little bit better. But I honestly don't use that at all. So I don't. This is my waving tool. It just says, hey, how you guys doing? The hand tool just allows you to move your palette around to get you quicker to certain areas if you're working in Photoshop pretty big like that. Um, the hand tool can also be used if you just hold down your space bar. If you're in a different kind of tool, if I'm here with my other tool, if I hold my if I hold down my space bar, the, the hand pops up so I can move her around and kind of get where I want to see her there. And the magnifying glass is, as you can imagine, you can zoom in or zoom out. Um, your plus sign in the magnifying glass allows you to zoom in. If you hold your option key down, you zoom back out. And then this little dot, dot, dot here says, hey, there's more stuff down here. There's a whole bunch more tools that are down here, which I don't even want to talk about because I never use them. But you have a ruler tool, a note tool. You can hey, do a Dick, red eye. You? Yep. You can Perfect. edit in, yeah, I was just gonna make a comment. You can edit there to add the mixer brush from there back into the brush um, assortment. Okay. You know, so that would be a way to add it because it's not in there for somebody. Oh, oh yeah, thank you. Exactly, I just typed that in. You push your, you put your cursor on the three dots and push the control key at the same time, and then you can there you go. get into your tool menu, okay? Yeah. Cool, thank you, Christy. So your mixer brush might be over here in the extra tools, slide it back over here to your toolbar. It's on your other side there and down. Yep. You got it. I got it, thank you, Christy. All right, so that is kind of like the overview of those tools. I know it was kind of quick. Some of them I don't even ever use. The, the ones I do use are the move tool, the selection tools, and the paint brushes, and the um, other things. So with this little guy, I'm going to come back and get rid of everything. So I'm going to work this image for you guys the way I would do it. Actually, there we go. So this is straight out of camera. And... I had it in Lightroom, so I brought it into Photoshop just so I could show you guys this stuff. So when we go, when I start with this, I'm gonna to go to my filter. I'm gonna to go to my camera raw filter because I'm gonna make some adjustments here. I would do these adjustments in Lightroom, but I just wanna show you that you can do them in camera raw. It's the same thing, pretty much. So for the exposure, I'm gonna leave it the same, but I'm gonna pull up, pull back these highlights a little bit because I want that white not to pop so much and I wanna bring out some blacks. So if I slide my slider this way, you can see that the blacks are kind of opening up. It's not as black anymore. I wanna make sure I have some detail in the shadow area back here behind her. And if you kind of look here, this little slider is up here. You can do the same thing in Lightroom as well. If you grab this, it will pull your blacks to where you want them. It'll bring your whites back up as well. Your blacks are kind of jammed up here on this, on the left side of the histogram. So I'm gonna push those towards the white side. This is where the whites are, and this is where the blacks are. And if I have that selected, so now I've kind of opened up everything down here, so it's not as dark, and you can see it behind her. Uh, I do wanna pull the highlights back, so I'm gonna bring the whites back a little bit more that kind of adjusted on me. And if you guys are, if anybody's in the PPA and are, are going through their CPP exam, this is kind of the way for you to, to um, succeed, I guess, at it. Cause it's, you talk about, you know, not having your blacks jammed up and all Yeah, that. we haven't, we haven't talked about PPA with the group very much. Oh, um, sorry. No, it's okay. It's just well, I didn't know like acronyms. A I don't know if like Chrissy Bell was doing some stuff. No. <laughs> so that kind of thing. So I kind of got that the way I want it to be. Um, there's some special effects you can do to this. 
like I like just to give it a touch of vignette. See, I'm kind of pulling this in. You can see it getting really dark around the edges there. I just want to give it a little bit of touch. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Still want to be. Yep. So real quick, so I saw you zoom out, you know, make the, the image really small. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is there a use case where you would want to make this image small in your workspace as opposed to like full size or full screen? I, I don't know. Why would I make it small? I, I have bad eyes. I can't see small. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I just did that because it was, it was kind of a fluke thing. I was trying to zoom it out and it, it just kind of got away from me. Okay. But no, this, I kind of try to keep, I try to look at things at like 50% or higher. This is at 33%. So I really like for me personally, just because of my eyesight, I, I like it to be at 50% of the screen. Um, that's at 63. But if I go down to 50, that's kind of my sweet spot for my eyeballs. But um, I'm okay for it going to 100 as well. That way I can kind of really look at the image and see what needs to be worked on and see if it's really in focus. And I'm really concerned about Bonnie, like Bonnie's eyes here, making sure that those, that to me is the most important thing in this picture is, is her eyeballs. Um, everything else is, is candy and cake, but if those are in focus. I'm golden. I don't care about anything else. That's the, the focal point for me. Not the, not the booze, not the cigar. So we got that going on. So we bring it back into Photoshop and it's adjusted the layers for me. Then I kind of look at an image and say, what do I want to take out? I mean, I could take out, I'm not taking out the ashtray because I like it there. I like this here because that's part of the image and what's what make it, what makes it what it is. I like the fact that we can see the, the booze behind her. And I do, Bonnie is one of those models that I love working with because she's got, she always complains about her eyes. Like you can never see your eyes. So this is a great shot for me. So I'm gonna kind of come in here. I'm gonna work this image a little bit. Um, oh, it's thundering here, guys. If I lose you, I apologize. So if our power goes out, just to let you know. Oh, okay. Just FYI. Yeah, so like this little- that came through here about 45 minutes ago. Yeah, it's probably the same one. So this little like thing on her lip here, I'm gonna use my little um, uh, spot healing brush, which I love. Now the thing about the spot healing brush for me is, or for a good tip is, don't make this thing so huge that you're trying to do like that because that's not going to work. What you want to do is make the brush the size of the area that you want to correct and then kind of give it a little push and then we'll get rid of stuff for you really nice and easy. So I like that. That's kind of cool. Now our eyeballs, I'm going to leave them like that, but they're just sharpened the way it, that tool sharpened them for me. I'm going to fix this under here because I screwed up. So I take my spot healing tool, or spot tool, oops. What do you mean it's empty? <laughs> what? Say it ain't so. I'll fix that back up, so that's gone. Now luckily the makeup artist did a good job and there's not too much wrong with her skin. Um, so I do like it, I do like her. There's a great little tool in Photoshop called um, Liquify. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with Liquify? That's a big no. I hear nobody talking. About oh, yeah. That. You can show <laughs> Liquify. I, I started using that last year, and it's one of my favorite tools. Yeah. Yep. So for me, the shortcut to Liquify is Command-Shift-X as an x-ray. And it opens up your Liquify palette, but it's found under your filter menu. And liquify is great. So like Bonnie has this little bit of hair over here. Whoops, that was a mistake, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that. But liquify, if you have your tool, you can move, you can warp things. Like I can push your hair out a little bit if I wanted to make it a little bit thicker. So that's kind of what I use that for. I can also, if you look here, there's, um, other things along this that I like, after you click here, you can use this face tool. You can see it identifies the face and those where the nose is. So I can come over here and actually adjust the shape of her face a little bit. So if I wanted to make the face, her face a little bit thinner, I can do that. I can increase or decrease the forehead if I wanted to do that. See how the hat moves a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yep, you can change the 
her smile, if I wanted her to smile. So push her smile up a little bit. Make that upper lip a little bit bigger. The lower lip a little bit bigger. So there's things that, you know, in Liquify you can do other than just poke and pod something. You can adjust eyeballs. Like another thing you'll notice sometimes when you do a photograph, eyes are not necessarily symmetrical. Bonnie's eyes in this instance are, but usually one eye is open more than the other. And if it is, if you look at this eye feature up here, you can tell it, hey, I want to adjust, sorry, I want to adjust the right eye and open it more. So you can like make the size of the right eye bigger. See how it's bigger and smaller? So you can kind of adjust it a little bit to make it match the opening of the other eye, which I think is a really cool, quick, quick um, tip to do. Another thing I would like to do for Bonnie is um, come back into the squishy tool, the warp tool, and just kind of tuck her in a little bit, just a smidge, nothing spectacular, but I'm gonna bring her in down here in a little bit. There we go. So I'm gonna say, okay. And you can see that it's kind of made her hair poofy. We did that a little bit. So we do, a, there's the before and there's the after. So it's a little bit of a change. Nothing, nothing that's gonna make her go, oh my God, you really like went crazy on that Photoshop, dude. That's not what we did. So um, the other thing I wanna do in this image is as I go through it, I'm gonna show you guys a little frequency separation thing. Yay. All right. Ignore my math skills. Now, frequency separation can really be uh, a great tool for editing a face. It can be a great tool for getting out wrinkles and clothes, but I typically use it, whoops, hello. I use it for faces. I don't use it too much for clothes. Sorry about that. So I have an action that I have. Uh, you'll notice that my action palette is in button mode. I love, I discovered button mode a couple of weeks ago. Joe Summers showed it to me and I was like, I love this. And what button mode does, let me see if I can change it back. Oops, hello. So if I don't go button mode, here's all of my actions. And I've got to sit there and I've got to scroll through and find what I want. I've got to then click on it, hit this button. But in button mode, it's all one click. So I know that I want to do, um, oops, sorry. Where's my, here's my frequency separations right here. We are in eight, 16 bits. So I'm gonna do frequency separation 16 bit, boink. And it's pouring down rain. Well, I hope you guys can hear that. It's crazy. <laughs> and we'll just let it run its little course. Oh, and we're done, then we're done. So we have frequency separation gives you a low layer and a high layer of frequency. And then the high frequency is where I, I make my adjustments and I kind of go through the skin and, and um, where's my tool? Where's my lasso tool? Oh my God, there it is. So I'll kind of grab my lasso tool and I'll just quickly draw circles around her and I tell it that I want a Gaussian blur, but I need to tell it what I want. And it's blurring the frequency separation layer, the high frequency layer, not the image itself. And so you see how, I'm gonna overdo it a little bit, but you can see how it starts to smooth her skin out. Mm -hmm. Is this a um, action that you purchased? Nope, it's one of the ones I think I got from like Flurn or one of the other, you know, like a mesh has one, Pixie okay. Perfect has one. I mean, they're, they're a dime a dozen. They're not hard to create. Um, I just can't walk you through the process of it because it, it's, it's yeah. really, it's kind of like, it's kind of like salt and peppering to, to taste. You have to do it for yourself. You know, when you find something online that you like, you're going to tweak it a little bit because it's not going to always meet your specifications and right. how you want to use it. But if somebody wanted to go out and find it, there's a few. Oh, yeah. I, out there. I mean, I can, 
after this is over, if you're going to post this to your group, I can send you a link to um, a frequency separation. I can probably push this out and just send you this. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Thank you. So if we did that, if you look at, oh, there's the before. Check that out. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> so that's the before. You could look at the top of her head where the, the brim of the hat is. That's the before. And then with the frequency separation, you know, it's a little overdone because right here you can see some lines and stuff. So I'm not super happy with that, but that you kind of get the gist. That's where that comes into play. Let me let me do a different frequency separation, which is a little bit more simplified. Where is it? See, I've got so many of them, it's ridiculous. <laughs> And that's not even the one I like. Did it again. See, it's same frequency separation. So there's a whole bunch of ones you can buy, but there's a the basic. How about the basic frequency separation? That's what that's always good. All right. So again, blur layer and the gray layer. The blur layer. If you work on it, this is where I kind of would come in here and start working on taking out blemishes on the blur layer. And then in the grayscale layer, you can, this is where you can get crazy. You can use the Gaussian blur. You can use your mixer brush. You can use all kinds of tools in this gray layer to smooth this, this face out a little bit. But I just kind of, I just whip it through with the, with the Gaussian blur. So I kind of like it that way. Let's make this a little less. Let's make it like. But you can see it still has a little bit of still overdoing it. Let me back this up. So this is where you start to do things to your taste. Like you got to look at this. So this this image is kind of smaller than like a normal headshot image would be. So that's why I'm bringing the radius of the blur down a little bit. And once I get it to where I want it, then we can just kind of go through and process the whole rest of the image. So it kind of cleans up really nicely and does some good things for it. And everybody does this differently. There's all kinds of ways. If you watch, um, if you guys write this name down, Gary Hughes is out of Florida. Gary does some headshots and he's got a little YouTube channel where he does the frequency separation tutorial which is about 10 minutes long and it's really basic but it's it's you, you get a much better understanding because i am probably not doing a good job for you guys but you just take your time i take my time and i go through the the image the edit of the image and just get it going there's a lot and then there are other software companies out there like portraiture um Portrait 3, Portraiture, and other things that will do this for you in just one click of a button. So it really depends on what you want to do and how much time you want to spend. So it's kind of tough to see that at this, at this distance, but by going a little tighter, that's the before and then that's the after. So it starts to get rid of some of those blemishes and does some things that might be a little overdone, but guess what? The beautiful thing about this is you can come here in your opacity and dial it down a little bit and bring it back. So it doesn't look so lost and so fake. It still looks good. Now Bonnie's skin, she's got good skin and a good makeup artist will hide a lot of sins, man, I'm telling you, it's awesome. So we finish up that frequency separation. I know that was kind of like a, a quick overview, but frequency separation will allow you to take a, a color image and make all kinds of edits to it. You, again, depending on what tool you want to use, it could be your paintbrush or you can get rid of all kinds of blemishes and do that. And then the, um, the actually, the, the, I'm kind of backwards. The gray tool is where the blemishes come out of and watch a good tutorial. <laughs> Don't watch me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just one of those things. It, it's once you learn it, 
And it's not that difficult, um, but once you kind of get the gist of it, you, you would, you'll find yourself using it more and more in your portrait work. And I know if you're doing landscape work or macro work, same thing would apply. You could still use a frequency separation to really pull out the petals of the flower, to pull out landscape, the trees and the, I mean, it's, it has its, mm-hmm. it has its things that you, it has its purposes. It has its, it's another good tool to have in your toolbox. That is for show. Sure. Yep. Um, let me see here. So besides your basic, you said that was straight out of the camera. So you, pretty much it was almost perfect. <laughs> almost perfect, but not quite. Cause we got to add smoke to the cigar. Ah, oh, there we, we go. We got to add smoke to the cigar. Yeah. <laughs> we can't just let the cigar hang in. This is a cigar bar for God's sakes. <laughs> so what I do with the cigar bar, there's, again, there's another, there's lots of ways to attack this. Um, you can, there are smoke brushes you can get. You can come over to your, your I don't have any, any of them loaded, but if you came to your brush tool and you come under your brushes, if you had them, you could load them. I don't have anything. I don't have any, um, smoke brushes to show you, but I use a completely different technique. That's, um, it's an application that we bought. It's this infinite panel, infinite color panel, infinite mm-hmm. texture panel mm-hmm. that will allow me to pull in elements. Um, oh, look at that, there's smoke. <laughs> so I grab some smoke, like let's just say, how, which one do we want? Let's use this guy. I like that one. It looks pretty cool. So we'll add this to the layer, add it to the, the layers in Photoshop. Now what this does, this is going to put it into a layer. It's going to put it into a certain mode and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, so it screens the image versus bringing in a black background and white smoke. All right, so it's in. So here's my smoke, and you can see that it's no, there's no black. Where'd the black go? Well, this mode here tells it to screen it, so it gets rid of all the black and keeps the white. But if I change this, there's that doesn't work. So your modes in Photoshop can really help you do some really cool tricks and techniques. So I will take this puppy. Come on. Why aren't you working? What's going on? There you go. There it is. It's not working now. It's not giving me my my turn to all my. How's my transform, man? Oh. I don't have to rasterize that, do I? That's kind of crazy. No. You shouldn't have to. Transform is. Command Control T. T. Yeah, Command, Command T is not working for me. Why is it not working for me? Because you need a new Mac. <laughs> That's true too. Sam nailed it. <laughs> it's always the Mac. Man, I thought you were about to say you needed a PC. Well, I have one of those. Nobody needs a PC. We have a lot of Mac users, John. <laughs> yeah, I'm John. just being. I'm being politically correct. <laughs> yeah, John. <laughs> That's weird. It's interesting. My um, ever since I well, actually, it was even after the update. My Photoshop sometimes doesn't allow me to mask. The mask button gets stuck, and then I have to re like close and reopen. So it might be this new update. Yeah, it's I don't know what's going on. There should be a. I'm doing Command T. There's no. There's no um, transform. It's just not showing you the. Not showing me the thing. transform. Yeah. That was my next tip. So transform is under edit. Go to edit and see. It may just not be showing you the bounding bars. I think that's what the problem no. is. Yeah, it's like not even available. Yeah. Oh. Um, I would close and reopen only because. Or or, well, you could just try to rasterize, rasterize it. Yeah. Let me rasterize that layer. No, nope. that's weird. I was working last night because I did that other image last night. What pain. Maybe I Photoshop don't... just went on strike. Yeah. It. Is your caps lock on by any chance? It is now. It's not on, it's off.
Let me just give us one more try, see what happens. Yeah, I'll be working in something and it works with masking and then I'll bring up another one and hit it and it just is like, I, it's like the button gets stuck and it doesn't even do anything. And then I just have to close and reopen. Yeah, my, my favorite pet peeve with Photoshop is every now and then, for reasons unknown, I'll mm -hmm. do like the space bar and click and move to drag in you know, my view area mm -hmm. and it like shifts everything way off it, it's weird yep christy could you just tell Stefan that his product sucks <laughs> yeah let me call let me wake him up let's see hey, tell him this one here, particular one smoke here. thing <laughs> this one particular smoke thing will not work for danny just tell him that so I danny will, while we're, i will we're, get on that message right now this this visual this an infinity tool that you got here with the visualizer the, the, are all these smoke things included as part of that package or did yeah you it's a it's a really cool package it's really inexpensive i think it's 149 dollars it might have gone up since we had a we had an opportunity to buy it at a, a, a kind of like a launch uh, event but it's really does some cool stuff i mean i've used they've got wings they've got all kinds of textures you can use they've got smoke they've got fire they've got liquids they've got sand they've got blood they've got <laughs> you know tripping slime i mean you name it i mean there's all kinds of cool textures to use um and then, and then they the other, update that on a server and you're basically going out to the server every time. yeah it's it's yeah. all web-based and he's got thousands and thousands of elements like this that just can work wonders. I mean, if you want to bring, he's got birds and uh, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Anybody that used to use raw exchange, that's Stefan. And uh, he and Pratik got together and modified this along with Connie Winstrom. It's pretty cool. All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to save this and I'm going to quit this. I'm going to come back into it because something's not right. Yeah. So bear with me, folks. I apologize. I, mean, I have you know. noticed this new update is a real memory hog. Uh, well, I, going I, into DxO or going into uh, exposure or anything. Yeah, well, when Sam and I got on the call earlier, I said, I'm not upgrading right now because there's like a, it says, you know, you have whatever for Photoshop. And I'm like, I'm not upgrading it at this moment. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. Huh. Well, technically, people, what's supposed to happen is I can manipulate this with the transform tool by hitting Command T, and it puts it. See that bounding box that goes around it right there? That would actually become ah, look at that. There you go. Voila! So now I can transform the transform the smoke. I can add it to my cigar. Wow, this is like really slow tonight. Sorry. Whoops. There we go. So like for Bonnie, I really want this to come off, the smoke to come out of her guy here. And so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to leave that smoke there. Now we talked about uh, masks before. Um, I'm going to hide that with a black mask. Go back over here and grab my paintbrush and make sure this is on white. Make sure that my brush is a little bit smaller here. Kind of bring that smoke back in wherever it is. Hopefully it'll come back in. I think it moved on you to the right. What? Yeah. No, it won't move. <laughs> oh, there it is. So we can add the smoke the way we want to add it to here. And that's the beauty of a mask. You can go back in and fix that, correct it. I can come down here. I like the way that this looks, kind of like it's coming off that cigar. <clears throat> so if I added another layer to the top of here, I could grab this. Hopefully this will work. Please work for me, for the love of God. Show me something good. I'm gonna grab my um, color replacement tool. I am going to choose a color. Like let's say orange, like right in there. 
Now I'm going to come down to this tip of the cigar and see if I can make that look like it's kind of like it's not working. Of course not. But you have to be on the other layer. I want to be on this layer. Hmm. Clip it. You, yeah, about to say, do you need to sample all layers? Yeah. Nope, never mind. It's not there. That's the problem. What you got right now? Well, let me just go down to the bottom layer. We'll do that. There we go. So we can kind of like add a little bit of fire to it, make it look a little red. Very cool. Yep. I can even come back in with a, a red brush, complete red brush. Let's go to red. Change, choose a different brush. Come on, brushes. I hear birds. I think that's the visualizer tool. They're really good birds. <laughs> Bring the opacity down a little bit on that. I really just kind of make that brighter. So it kind of gives a little bit of color to it. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. so we can add a little smoke to that, little element to it. Um, make Bonnie look cooler than she is. <laughs> yep. So we got that going on. And then the other, the last thing I would do for this is um, these are Nick tools. And I'm going to cross my fingers that this works a little bit. I'm going to flatten this image all the way down because I think I'm okay with it there. I have that texture will go. Oh, it's hidden. That's why. Get rid of it. Blink. And then I go into the last thing. One of the last things I do is go into Color Effects Pro. Mm -hmm. That'll take forever to do. Christy, have you upgraded to this, this new version? Yeah. Is it worth it? Um, you know, not a lot of changes, but I stay up with them. It's just cheaper and easier in the long run. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it eventually. Uh, so this is not, I'm not going to colorize this puppy. That's not what I'm there for. So what I like in here is this light and darken center thing. I love this little tool. So I'll, If I can say... If you haven't tried the DxO tools, which is the Nick tools, mm -hmm. they have a 30-day trial. And mm -hmm. um, a great time to buy them is around the holidays if you want to wait. But a 30-day trial lets you play with them all. Yeah, and they're actually really good tools, so I like them. They're there. currently running 30% off, so if you're... Yeah. If you're not an owner, this would be a good time to think about it because it's got it's got a deal going right now. And they're fantastic for landscapes, by the way. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They're black and white. It does a nice job, too. So they do. I mean, the whole suite is pretty sweet. I, I do like it. It's a sweet, sweet. Oh, it's a Danny, sweet, dude. It's a sweet, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it is a sweet, sweet. I like it because of just what it just did. It brings it in as a layer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then I kind of add my little logo there from the, the library, zip it down a little bit. I always drop my logos down to like 25%. And that's kind of a cool image. And people will say, he added that smoke. And I was like, yeah, I did. I added it. <laughs> I'm proud of that smoke. Are you kidding me? Looks amazing. I'm proud of that smoke. So that's how I would kind of edit an image. But those tools... Um, the more you play in Photoshop, the better you're going to get at it. Like anything else you practice, it, it just it practices the way it goes. But Danny. Yes, sir. It, it, this, it, that, that's not the way it was viewed. What do you mean? What do you mean? Practice makes perfect? No, I mean, that's not the way the camera saw it, Danny. Oh. You know? <laughs> So well, what, you know. so how, do you, how do you respond? How do you respond to that? I mean, so basically, I mean, it, and it's it's a it's a common discussion in various photography forums uh, that you've got the the documentarians, where you're right. supposed to this? document it, and, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> obviously you don't have that problem. So you know, what's your response? Um, like, oh my God, you over you over processed it. You voice up everything. Listen, man. I've heard it all, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care. He's a visual <laughs> creative artist. A creative exactly. artist. Let me show you guys artist. something. That yeah. yeah. 
Well, it's I not think even... the answer, John, is like it's your art, and if you are trying to say I'm being a journalist or I'm being a documentarian, then you don't make edits. But if you're not doing something for those specific reasons, then why should you're going to tell a painter they can't use a color because it doesn't show up in nature? I mean, like that's ridiculous, right? He's an artist, and this is his art. Good. And, th and when I was out in, in New York a couple of weeks ago, I saw this great heroic battle between Spider-Man and the Sinister Six. Yeah, he and I captured this exactly like it was in my camera. Yeah, that's straight, straight that, out of camera. That's, that's straight out of camera, right? That's yeah, the, straight out of yeah. camera. Yeah, straight out of camera. The studio yeah. was kind of pissed, but that's okay. And he's like, "What are you doing here?" And I'm like, "All right." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so it, it, it's really a matter of, and, and Denise and Danny are spot on. I tend to, I, I absolutely agree. It's really what the photographer's vision is. It, it, it's, and everyone can choose their own path, right? So Correct. You can, you can be yeah. the photojournalist where with minimal edits, with basically just exposure and contrast, or, or you can be an artist. Yeah. Um, right. and, but I think you can be both. So if I go to downtown New York and I take pictures of street photography, I do very little editing because I'm telling a story about what I saw on the street. Yeah. But I might take a picture of, of a portrait of somebody and make that a cartoon. Or I might, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think you have to pick. I think every it, image calls for something different. And what story it, are you telling today? Exactly. And that's, that's exactly the point I was going to make as well. So it's not that you, I mean, you can, I mean, obviously you can choose to be, everything is a you know, theme and a there, style. But You're going to have some great discussions and I, and I like the, the topic that we're having. It really is. I mean, I can certainly do things straight out of the camera and I'd be happy with them, but sometimes you just have to go a little couple extra steps for me to make my clients happy, but to make me right. happy to show what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I have seen people that will do straight out of camera and show blotchy faces and, and, you know, blemishes and things like that, that could easily be fixed. And, you know, a purist will say, well, that's the way they looked when I took them. And I'm saying, okay, well, I think if you showed them this without them, they would appreciate that more, but mm -hmm. that's just me. It depends on what you want. I mean, if I'm doing something very artsy fartsy, I could give a shit what anybody says. I mean, I really could care less, but if it's something like, I have a few photography friends that will call me out on some things and I respect them for it, but you know, they, they will say it in a way that makes me relook at an image. Um, maybe the way I edited it, maybe the way it looks, maybe something I didn't do. Like you guys know Don Rosenberg. I, I trust Don. Don's, Don's had conversations with me about some of my images and, you know, I will explain it to him and he, you know, he may not like what I do, but, at least he, I, I respect him enough to come to me and say, to, to give me his opinion. If I don't know you from Adam and you're in a, in a forum somewhere and you see a piece of my artwork and you start ragging on it, I just ignore you. I, I don't, I don't care. But people that I care about, like Don, you know, I, I respect that. So if Samantha Marshall came to me and said, Hey, I think you're this image you miss this or this looks kind of bad that you realize that and sometimes I miss things. Sometimes I miss a piece of clothing or I, I edit something and it doesn't look right and, and I just didn't catch it. So I'm happy that people will tell me that, but for artwork purposes and things of that nature, you just got to do what you got to do. You do you boo. I mean, seriously, people are going to say things. People are going to talk to you about things and people are going to do things. So last night I did this image, same, same bar, same, not the same girl, different girl. But Jason said to Samantha, did he have that smoke? Well, the answer is yes. <laughs> so um, this, if you, if I work down on it, that's the original image. That's pretty much straight out of camera. Except for in, in Lightroom, I, I pulled out the blacks a little bit because these were all kind of blocked up a little bit. I removed the hand gel sanitizer bottle that was sitting right here because I didn't like it. Does that mean it's it's not true? Of the times. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. It just didn't quite match. I mean, I realize there's alcohol in that hand sanitizer, but it just <laughs> did not match the stuff that was behind it. Yeah. So with my infinite textures, I added that smoke. I added some more smoke. And you didn't make I it a smoke the cigar. Right. So you saved your life. <laughs> no. 
I, I told Samantha when I did this shot, I felt like I was going to, exp I'm not a smoker and I was in the cigar lounge and I was about to die. I mean, I yeah. was just like, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not a, I'm not a smoker and no offense. I, I, if you guys are smokers, knock your socks off. But for me oh, so, and my so asthmatic is, self and. <laughs> so this is not your bar. This is not my bar. Now, I was going to give you props for the whiskeys, but. Well, I have the Blantons. I have Blantons and Buffalo Trace at my house. So if you okay. want to come over, I'm happy to share. <laughs> you better be careful. <laughs> but yeah, we do. I mean, I do add stuff to photographs to make them a little bit just to, look at she's smoking a cigar. There has to be smoke somewhere. Even if I just did that, that would be enough. But I wanted to say, okay, it looks like she's kind of blowing the smoke out of her mouth as well. You want to show so, the enjoyment. Right. 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 And she, you know, she, I sent this image to her last night and she's like, that's so effing awesome. I'm like, all right, cool. As long as you like it. Yeah. That's kind of all that matters to me is if the client likes it and if I like it, that's cool. There's a couple things I could do to this image, but I've, I'm not going to tell you what I could have done to it, but there's some things I could have done. Like I could have simply very easily come down here and taken out these white spots. I didn't do that. But they're nails. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, it's how hard is it to get on there with a little, you know, patch tool and just go bing, bing, bing. So yeah, yeah. pretty simple, but yeah, we do add stuff to things. Um, there are images that I have that are just almost straight out of camera. I might just adjust the, the um, white balance and bring the exposure down and I'm done and I'm cool with that. And then there's some that need a little bit more attention. That's all. Yeah. Interesting comment. When the uh, Loudoun Voter Club was first uh, founded, the rules of competition had three categories, black and white, color, and manipulated. You actually had to oh. confess. If you manipulated your photo, you became a different category, but that opened up the area of interest. Right. Wow, interesting. Let me show you this, this image of my high school senior. This is, this is not even retouched. All I did to this image was I shot it, I edited, I edited it in Photoshop or in Lightroom just by adjusting the exposure a little bit and brought down the highlights. That's it. There's no retouching on her face. There's nothing. That's the straight out of camera. Honest to God image. I maybe added a little soft vignette to it, but nothing wrong with that image. Yeah. And nobody's ever gonna, I don't, it's like, it's like saying to somebody, hey, can you tell which one came from a 35 millimeter digital camera or a iPhone? No, you can't tell. Can you? I can't. Well, you have to look for the grain. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kind of. I was just thinking about that today two of my pieces that I've art pieces that I've actually sold multiple pieces of iPhone pictures. It makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> I was just at the right no, place. At the right no, time. no camera can capture that interesting perspective that the iPhone lens gets. That's why. Well, I, I, will think, say, I think it's that you're at the right place at the right time, but well, there's, it, there's that too, but there's times where I've stood someplace with my camera and I hold up the iPhone and it actually, there's a, there's a sweet spot and it's yeah. millimeters that just is almost impossible to create on a full size camera. But I will add a thought here to this conversation about whether things are manipulated. This idea that film wasn't manipulated, then if you think that, like you've never actually read a Magnum book, because if you look at Ansel Adams' art, He's mm -hmm. telling people, dodge here, burn here, get put a moon here, get rid of that tree. All of those things can be done in the darkroom, which is why Photoshop is a digital darkroom. So to think that we're different artists because we have a digital image instead of a film image is ridiculous because people on film have been adding and deleting and content and wearing things out forever. Yeah. 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 But you're right. I, I mean, if you look at any of the famous portraits and stuff or pictures they were they were manipulating this stuff with that's what dodge and burn is all about if you look at the and, dodge and, and burn tools in photoshop and that's filter right. and filters orange filters absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely so so people are always like well you can't do that in the dark room and it's like then you don't know what you can do in a dark room because right. that's that was the premise mm -hmm. that environment was the premise for photoshop so it you you press the button for me, John. Just saying, like to be clear, <laughs> you know this is a, this is a point of contention. I will battle you on Facebook in public about it because it yeah, like, really I've, drives I've, me crazy. 
I've had, people... I've had some more comments. So okay, it's... so tomorrow we're going to post a battle, battle between John and Denise. <laughs> no, that's no, right. We'll go no, 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 no. You, you misunderstand <laughs> my question, folks. Bring your boo. I mean, well, I, I understand. Had that question you are the devil's, devil's advocate. Right. I understand how you asked it, which is why I'm not yelling at you. I'm just saying <laughs> it, it is a... It is, a, it is a question that get, gets asked and it gets posted on all Facebook all the time, the time with, oh, you did this, you did that. Danny, you all create beautiful art and that's all it needs to be. It needs to just make exactly. you happy. And it, it's nobody's business, frankly. And if you, if you guys, seriously, if you let, if you put it into forums out there on Facebook, if you are such a glutton for punishment that you say, I would love some constructive criticism, be prepared to have your ass handed to you. Well, you have to have a thick skin. Both sides too. People are going to be fighting with each other too because they'll be like, "What are you talking about? That's awesome." <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. It's just crazy what people will debate with you about. And like you said, this you manipulated this. This looks too blah blah blah. I'm like, that's what I wanted it to look like. Sorry. Yep. That's what I wanted it to do, man. <laughs> Yeah. What are you doing here, Danny? I'm just dicking around for a second. Yeah, I'm... he's playing around. So, Danny, tell them what this is for. This is, I'm working with the Southern Maryland uh, pinup models. They do a yearly calendar. So, we are putting together the month of the calendar for them. Um, this is, they we, we set up these scenes. We go out and we take shots of this old Motel Bell Alton, which is like a really rundown motel now. But Back in its heyday, it had casinos and it was cool and it was hip and it was, you know. So we'll take in this and this will probably be one of the images that we use for the for the um, for the calendar. So when the calendar comes out, I'll let Samantha know if you guys want to buy one. It's for it's for Animal Rescue here in Southern Maryland and they do a great job. And last year, Don Rosenberger and I got hooked up with these girls and. Half the catalog, half the calendar looked really good because Don and I shot the images. The other half were shot with like really crappy iPhones or something, but they looked horrible. And I just told the girls, let me just do the whole thing for you. And so, you know, if Don can help, he'll jump in and help. But that happens. We did, uh, I had it was featured in a couple, couple scenes in a calendar last year. Uh -huh. And um, I had several people say, yours were the best ones. And I'm like, don't say that. <laughs> Because all these people work really hard, but I totally know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it can be really time consuming. I mean, yeah, like yeah. this this young lady that was in front of this Bell Alton thing. She um she was fun to do. The little pug came over uh, there, and you know they're not professional models by any stretch of the imagination. So they just come out and they have a good time and they do their thing. So what I was trying to demonstrate here was the the content aware fill, which didn't really work that well, but it did take out that. <laughs> that um pole. it took out the pole but it kind of made the sign a little funky but that's kind of a fun tool content aware is really good um if you wanted to take out see again straight out of the camera would be okay i hate all these little lines that are going back through there so i will grab my little um spy oh. hill brush and hey, I'll, just, I'll just take them all out if it'll do it for me Why is this not working? Christy, what did you do to my Photoshop, dude? <laughs> he zapped you. You dude, do what? that voodoo that you do so student? well. <laughs> oh, I know. Really? You need hey, to the what about your professor? Somebody's talking on the phone. They don't know. Oh. On live mic. Yeah. So anyway, you can just kind of come through here and take all these little things out. Now, yeah, some people would say, hey, it's, uh, why are you taking them out? They're, they're there. That should be natural. Well, no, any distraction. No. You can take out any distraction you want. Right. Just play the landscape. <laughs> I've yeah. had, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever followed my Instagram or stuff, but I, I tend to post a lot of barn pictures. So I, I do real estate appraising during the day, and I'm a superhero at night. So <laughs> when I when I go out and I take some of these barn shots, I've actually had people say to me, oh, my God, I can't believe you left all those telephone lines and I would have taken that out. I'm like, well, that's what the way it was and that's the way it goes. And so you can't win, man. That's, that's a no win battle. <laughs> uh, see? <laughs> yeah. It just depends but, on the picture. Right. So I kind of, I, when I do my barns, I, they're kind of like an HDR effect and 
you know, some people don't like the HDR effect. Who cares, dude? Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling, man. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll take out some of this stuff. Yeah, I guess, you know, for those, you know, you know listening in on, on our banter a little bit, it, it, you, if you're posting a picture anywhere and people are offering their opinions, it's really up to you to understand which critique to take the heart and, and learn from versus people just being jerks. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of what they want to do. It's um, some people, and it's so amazing to me that some of these people that give you these wonderful lashings and then, you know, tell you your shit, you go look at their page and it's like, really? Yeah, you got a lot of nerve. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions, like specific editing questions? Yeah, actually, I do, if you don't have sure. that. Um, one of the things that's very simple in theory, but I always have trouble with, is if you have multiple images open and you want to drag one image into a layer on another, mm -hmm. can you go through that and show us how to do that? Sure. So I have two images open, right? You can either grab this background layer and drag it on top of this tab. It opens it up. You can just drop it and drag it and it'll say, it'll ask you a question and you can just say, yeah. And it drops it on top of that. So it's in that layer. Is that what you were asking? Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, for some reason, I seem to have trouble doing that. <laughs> the, the, the trick is to keep it held down until that tab opens up and then drag that the image into into the um, into the screen. Just don't drag it to the tab and drop it. It's gonna open up, and you have to drop it in there. Okay. You Thank have you. to put it on the other image, for right. sure. Yeah. And yeah. if you want it to align, you hold the shift key, and it mm -hmm. and it does what it did the first time, which is cover the whole thing, and then you can resize it. Yep. Okay. I mean, yeah, if you wanted to, well. you could also be in this tab if you did a select all, which is you do that, you copy it. You can come to this one, this tab, make sure you're in there. And you can then paste it in as well. It'll, it'll paste it in as well. So there's two ways to do it. Just that, I'm sure there's more, but. Yeah, exactly. It, it's okay. getting back to your skinning cats argument. And, and another little tip, uh, Danny, it, it, how do you ever change the opacity when adjusting those layers and maneuvering them like that? Sometimes, yeah, so I can see what's below it, absolutely. Now I think if you go if you go below fifty percent or like forty five percent, sometimes if you have this auto selection tool, once you um, if you go below that opacity, it won't it won't recognize it. So just be aware of that as well. But yeah, you can do that. What if you wanted to yeah, change, you. change the sky in that particular? Mm -hmm. How would you go about doing something like that? Magic. <laughs> Lord, that new. <laughs> Let me see if I can do something for you, Christy. Oh, man. You want, you would really want to spark a debate about what's real, what's not. Talk about a sky replacement in a landscape. Let me see if I have a sky I can drop in here. Let me see. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit of background. I've been shooting at Christy's studio for a good long while, and I'm using her psych wall, but I would like to add in a nice background for some of my portraits. Uh, so maybe that was a better question. <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't want to get into the debate. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody's going to get into the debate here. I use all the time and change the yeah. background. You're good. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you want to cover up my spotless psych wall? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> wants to make. I, I, I don't want to answer that because I want to keep shooting at your studio. But, <laughs> but it's, no, it's, it's floating in the air. And, and for portraits, I've, I've, I've done that myself. I've seen a lot of other people do it. It's absolutely you know, a common thing to shoot against a gray or a white background and, and swap out that background for something that mm -hmm. is what your vision had in mind. Yes, and I have no clue how to do that. There you go, Chrissy. Back. Clouds are changed. Cheryl. Cheryl, Cheryl. clouds are changed. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, except the model's the, gone. The model's <laughs> gone. So actually, um, Look up, um, is it Skylar? 
Uh, the Skylum. Luminar. Skylum. No, yes. it's Skylum yeah, Luminar if, 4. I, I, Luminar I tried, 4. Yeah. Yep. Carol, look that up because I just got yeah. the seven day trial and it has a sky replacement option that is phenomenal. Like, yeah. And it, so let me give you guys a little clue. You, you know who, uh, you know who Amesh is from Pigs and Perfect? Yeah. Yeah. He just posted about that today. He, if he has links to that software that you can do drop different skies in and it does color correcting, it's really slick. Yeah. And it's only like $89. It's not yeah. that expensive. Yeah. And, and they give you sun rays. I mean, there's a lot of other good tools that come with it, too. Oh, yeah. But that, their I, AI I, sky I, replacement is worth the cost of admission. Yeah, I just have Absolutely. The whole product the is good. But oh. the thing about it, so the thing that's interesting about it, if the sky does not make at least 5 five or I think it's 10%, I think it's 5% of the image. So in this image that Danny has up, it would replace the sky because he can see it. Right. But if it doesn't, understand that a sky is there like say you're shooting a forest and you want to replace a, a bland sky if it can't see the sky it won't do it mm -hmm. and i've never tried to do it with like a model on a blank wall can i here can i share my screen danny because i actually have yeah let me let me stop sharing here okay. cheryl remind me to show you a couple of those products saturday when you're in you know i will can everybody see my screen yep Okay, so you can see this is a fake sky because you can see the white stripe there. This is not straight out of camera? No. <laughs> neither is that one. But neither is that one. Hold on. Neither is that one. Hold on. <laughs> that one is. <laughs> kind of. I, I uh, you know. Is that Amanda? That's that Amanda. Like Amanda. Yeah. But see how everything blew out white? And also, you can also see, actually, I can turn this off so you can actually see it. You can see there's the umbrella because Jason was holding the umbrella for me and I didn't notice that and when I was taking the picture because we were actually trying to catch the train and we ran up and just did it really fast. And, um, but so today I was messing around and I was, and I basically just took this piece here and just threw it up here and it was almost perfect. And then I threw the sky in there. So that took like five minutes using that luminar thing. Unfortunately, my scratch disc is full right now, so I can't do anything right now. <laughs> I have to clean up my hard drives. But yeah, but I don't understand. Like luminar wouldn't have left a white line there, so no, I don't. No, 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 this is because. So I actually did this one. It's almost perfect. I have to fix something over here just to fix it. But what I did was I actually did this, and then pulled that over to this one, because I didn't want to have to keep recreating this section. Gotcha. So I, and I didn't want to have to pick another sky because I couldn't remember which one I picked. So that was why I was doing it that way. But um, Got it. yeah, and it just didn't fit. I think this was the original one. So anyway, but that it's so, Cheryl, it's so super easy. This took like 10 seconds. This took like two minutes to, for me to line things up. But it takes longer to figure out which button in Luminar to press than it exactly. does for Luminar to do the work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I will tell you though, people will give you grief because because Luminar is so popular, people will be like, "That's Luminar Sky Four. Like they people recognize it. Oh, I and they, I've been warping them and I changed the opacity too. And you can use your own skies, so yeah, and you, you can use. use your, that's where I was gonna go. It's like yeah. so, I have a whole um, a whole video on YouTube about it, changing skies, and. I tell people all the time, if you see an epic sky, whether it's on your phone or in your camera, take sky okay. shots because mm -hmm. they all work. You can take an iPhone sky and put it in a full frame photo and it's going to go just fine. So you should collect every sky you see that's awesome so that you can use your own and Skylum mm -hmm. allows you to pick your own sky. So it's pretty brilliant. Yeah. I'll be investing in it. I have four days left in the trial though. <laughs> <laughs> so does anyone else have questions hey danny i really appreciate this sam thanks for having me tonight yeah uh, nice i got a zip but i'll yeah. talk to you guys all later okay all right. Bye, christy thanks for coming good weekend all right, thanks all right you guys have been taking it easy on danny what what do you mean you can't be mean to an artist <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you for calling me an artist. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's, it's so it, 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 any any questions? I mean, folks have been relatively quiet. 
if you guys come up with questions afterwards, um, I left you information on how to get a hold of me. I'm I'm always happy. Samantha knows I'm happy to talk stuff like this. If you guys want to do he a does Zoom have thing, a real day job, so we can't bother him during the day. <laughs> yeah, I just I will answer slowly. But sometimes, like Samantha will call for a question, or I'll ask her a question. I was like, "Let's zoom." I'm gonna, I got a question for you. Yeah. So it's easier to, to for me. It's easier to visually teach you than to tell you. So. Yeah. Well, you did you did a good job, Danny. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I'll I'm gonna post the information about the Lumar, Luminar in the group site. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, the Luminar thing, I, if you go to Pix and Perfect, you can watch him do the Luminar stuff on some images. And I was real impressed. I almost dropped 90 bucks today just for that because I was like, huh, <laughs> I could probably use that. It does save time. It's. I was telling Denise earlier that I actually don't have one action in my Photoshop because I have this like fear of anything weird like different that i can't control and i always want to do everything by hand which is so dumb because it's like i'm spending 20 minutes right doing something when everybody else just goes you know <laughs> yeah and just so, you know we were talking about the nick collection earlier and then when you start getting into nick collection you can create your own recipes and right uh, so yeah it, it's doing your own actions and doing your own recipes as, as you get more you know for folks that haven't really gotten into heavy editing when you find that you're doing a lot of things repeatedly in a very similar way, make an action or make a recipe or you know, make a preset in Lightroom, save yeah. yourself some time. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things I will tell you guys is that if you are, if you're a part of the Creative Cloud community, Adobe That's right. has brushes and actions and things mm -hmm. that are there for you for free. There's a lot of people that sell actions and I have purchased a shit ton of actions over my lifetime. And I like Samantha, I very rarely use an action. I, I mean, I, except like you saw that frequency separation that I did. That's an action that I would use all the time because it saves me the, the three steps to make that high pass and low pass thing. So, but for those creative things that people go by, I just, I have never found my niche with that stuff. I just, just yeah. don't. Yeah, I, I agree with Danny on that. Like I don't, I don't use, I'm not a preset person. I don't make recipes even if I do things the same way, but I do create action. So I have like a high pass sharpening, that's an action. Why, why would I go through those steps over and over <laughs> when it's gonna create a mask that I can manipulate? And I have a, a glow action and I have a, you know, just those kind of things where it's the same exact step every time. Yep. That's the beauty of the actions, in my opinion. Not, I don't do like presets because I don't, I don't want like somebody else's mojo on my photo. I want to figure out how to do it and do it myself. So I guess well, that's how I look at it. Well, like you said, they, they recognize that it's, you know, cloud number five out of this collection. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's right. But, and, th and now yeah. that's the thing on Facebook, to tell you the truth. That is like what they're doing. They're calling out like that's Luminar X. And, you know, you just have to be aware. It may be not for everybody, but if you post in enough places, people will call you to the curb. And that's not what you want, right? You want it to translate as a, a natural image. And honestly, it looks natural. They just recognize the cloud pattern. So yeah. if you have your own collection, then you kind of bar that from happening, even though you're using the super cool software that does it for you. Because even Photoshop, with all of its masking skills and selecting skills, it doesn't do as good a job as the Luminar, period. Yeah, yeah. And the thing about the Luminar is just, it doesn't replace Photoshop, it just enhances Photoshop. No, it's just a tool. Yeah, it's yeah. just a tool. And it's, it acts as a plug-in to Lightroom as well. Yeah, so it's a pretty sweet thing. If anything can save you time, that's great. But, you know, if you want to be an artist, you do your own thing and find your own path and do your own editing and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's oh, you're welcome. Here. You guys are welcome. You guys are pretty quiet, but thank you for all the questions. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> if you have any questions, please let us know. We'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. And this, awesome. this class can continue and continue. Like I said to Samantha, or I said earlier to you guys is we are one of our guys at Maryland PPA wants to develop a study group. And I thought that was a great idea because sometimes you, you take these dives into Photoshop for an hour and a half 
and you just touch the surface of all the things you can do. That, that, that brush tool thing could be an easy whole day workshop. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So I hope I didn't scare you guys away from it. If you don't use Photoshop, don't be afraid of it. It's, it's a really cool tool. There's lots of great resources on the internet to, to get you through it. Adobe, what is it called? Um, is it enhanced or behanced or something? They have a whole community that will share these tutorials. And a lot of these Adobe uh, employees will post tutorials on Photoshop, Illustrator. You know, if you're a Creative Cloud suite person, you can learn a ton of stuff. It's behanced. Thank you. Um, it's, a, it's just an amazing resource of information. And it's free if you, with your Creative Cloud subscription. So can't beat free. Yep. Can't beat that. All right, you guys. You know, any right, questions for me? I'm going I'm to go uh, manipulate some images right out of camera. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Thank everybody. you guys for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thanks, Danny. Have a good night, guys. You too. Bye. Bye.